Welcome everyone to Advertising Week New York. I hope everyone has been enjoying all of the great sessions so far and we're so happy to have you all here for our next session. This is what equity looks like investing in diverse media with NBC Universal and Group Black. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sherelle Starr, Executive Director of Muse by Clio, and I'm thrilled to be here this afternoon. As we all know, diversity in media, uh, in diversity in the media industry, from owners to creators to advertisers, is essential to ensure that all perspectives are represented. And that's why NBCU and Group Black have partnered together for an exclusive partnership aimed to amplify Black-led content today and beyond. The partnership launched back in June, and it has been a huge success thus far, and we're eager to hear from them on the success, as well as the agency response to the partnership and the importance of DEI in advertising. So with all that being said, please join me in welcoming Peter Black, excuse me, Peter Blacker, EVP Streaming and Data Products and Head of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, Global Advertising and Partnerships, NBC Universal. Long title. Right, right. right. <laughs> And everything else. <laughs> Long title, but you got it all out there. No worries. Bon and Bo, co-founder and chief strategy officer, Group Black. Woohoo! Okay, I need some more stuff though. I'm really <laughs> I need to add some more. Right. And then Emerson J. Sosa Pons, EVP Cultural Convergence at Senna. Yeah. Woo. Well, gentlemen, welcome so much uh, to the event. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited to dive right into uh, learning more about the partnership thus far, why it's so important to the industry, and your respective thoughts on the importance of DEI in advertising and what's to come of this partnership. So with all of that said, I want to dive right in and start with Bonin. Okay. Um, for those who might not be as familiar, can you tell us a little bit about Black Excellence 365 and how this partnership came to be? First of all, what's up, Advertising Week? How are you? Are you good? Whoa. Are you good? Okay. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to say that. <laughs> I swear, this is like the, I don't even know how many times I've Keep that energy. Keep that energy. But this what's is the what's in that water bottle? bottle. Right? Yeah, yeah, what's in that water bottle? I can tell you what I wish was in that water bottle. Uh, um, you know, first, I just, I just really want to tip my hat to Peter and the entire NBC team. Um, to, to build a product of, of this level and caliber um, that delivers on a solution and to, to be quite honest, to entrust, you know, we're still a startup, uh, to entrust, <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay, fair ish. enough. Ish, startup-ish. Kind of. Uh, but you know, to entrust us to bring this product, uh, well, I mean, it was collaborative, but to entrust us to bring this product to market really means a lot, and I think that, you know, what you guys have done as a partner should be heralded, and I've, quite frankly, it's a first, and I've never seen it before, but to give kind of the audience, you know, the details is that this is really a first of its kind solution to meet the needs that we heard from the marketplace. You know, we've been in the marketplace almost over two and a half years, and that's really how do you reach an audience that you know is your growth audience in a way that has authenticity and resonance? And how do you do that that goes beyond just potentially maybe one-off demographic targeting, but actually understanding what is the content that they're consuming and how are they consuming it and how do you deliver against that audience? And so this is a collection of black-focused content that we exclusively bring to the market. And the solution sol solves a number of the challenges which we've heard from scale, to quality, to the type of product that we already know how to leverage and utilize, which is streaming uh, and linear, and we haven't seen this product at the marketplace before. And I think that that speaks to why it's been so successful and why we've had such a huge response from clients uh, in a very short period of time, because it's really delivering on the way that they are trying to reach this audience that hadn't existed before. I love that. And so when you say... I mean, I don't know if you have other... I would just say you've made it so easy. I mean, the truth is that, um, like many of us in this room, we've done a lot of uh, partnerships. You try to do different innovative things. It doesn't always work out. And we really have to be very fortunate to have uh, a similar vision, which we've shared. But also, aside from the two of us, deep teams of people that are in this room and not in this room who have worked really hard to make this thing come to life. Because we can agree to do something cool but at the end of the day, 
it takes the folks that have to really do the heavy lifting. Pioneering is not easy stuff. And, um, and so I, I will take a second, because there's a number of people in the audience here, say thank you for making us look good, because it's been really great work from everybody out there. So thank you, whoever's in the audience I can't see, to help make this partnership take off. This has been awesome, thank you. Yeah, and to all the teams. And I think you know there were some key pieces, which was deliver on true client needs in a way that hasn't been done before, and make sure that there's exclusivity, so that we are truly proving to you that it's you know, our efforts that are driving it, and we're bringing something unique that we collaborated together into the marketplace for our clients based on what feedback we've heard. And yeah. I love that. So when you say, you know, this is unique, you know, this is just different than the other partners, what is different about this? Like, uh, you work with a ton of other partners at NBC Universal. So what is so different about this partnership? Why did you say yes to this one? Um, well, I'll start with the, what makes it different. Um, I've been in the company for a little over 18 years, seen a couple of different things. We almost never <laughs> give over um, exclusive sales uh, rights to someone that is not part of our company. And um, the only reason that we would be able to do something like that is number one, based on trust, and number two, answering a need that at the end of the day we're hearing from our marketing partners. And they have come to us and said, we would like to find things at scale that are looking at um, diverse communities in front of and behind the camera. We want to work with companies that are minority owned mm -hmm. and that are focused on giving back to that community. And so when that came across, it's funny, we could almost do like a little mini series of how this whole deal came to be. <laughs> Maybe it's, that'll be next one. It could be, that'll, <laughs> yeah. that'll be the next thing. But it was just kind of fun and, 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 and it, all, it all sort of came together in a way that we're at, to, to Bonin's point, we're answering, and I'm excited to hear your viewpoint too, we're answering a need in the marketplace, first and foremost, and we're doing something that's, quite frankly, never been done before. So that's always exciting. And talking about sort of your point of view, can you share sort of how the industry, is sort of the agency side, is sort of viewing this partnership and what you've seen thus far? Sure. Um, so, you know, I have to firstly really commend Group Black and start with the vision and the goals that they, from day one, have set out to accomplish, which is to really bring forward equity into the, mic into the marketplace, to bring forward culturally authentic opportunities for brands and marketers, right? Mm -hmm. And then to make a tangible impact in communities, in mm -hmm. black communities in particular. And I think that that's something that I, I have to applaud from day one. And this, to me, this partnership, mm -hmm. and I think from the agency standpoint, is an elevation of that journey. It's another step. It's something where, as you see that staircase really in front of you, it's another step of getting to another elevated place. I think, you know, I've heard you say, Pon, in many a time before, you want to be one of the big guys. You want to be one of the big media powerhouses out there. And this is how it really starts. This is how it gets to that place. You mentioned you're a startup, but yeah. You know, yeah. there's a lot more to it. Yeah. Trying to get some leads. Right? I was like, he's trying to, he's trying to be humble. He's trying to be humble, is the thing. Okay, okay. Big uh, startup. From, <laughs> and, and then from an NBC standpoint, I think that being one of those powerhouses, right? I think something that is equally as commendable is understanding the evolving marketplace, the evolving needs of the consumer, right? Consumers are, are significantly more attuned to who's making the content, how are those stories coming to life, how, you know, who is it benefiting? And then frankly, where am I watching it? Is it a place that resonates with me? Mm -hmm. So all of that from an NBC standpoint, I saw as something that, and I, and I laugh because this is like one of those phrases where it's like, with all of the heritage that NBC has, Telemundo and all of the work that you do in communities on a local basis, this again is another example of, the, of NBC doing the work. Mm -hmm. So I equally commend them on that front. Um, from an agency perspective, right, Zenith, this is something that, and I think it's been mentioned here a couple times, have you heard of the word scale, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> agencies, and I think our clients, our, our analysts, we are constantly looking for that next solution to deliver when it comes to black-owned business at scale. And clients are constantly looking for that. And I think the secondary piece that with the backing of NBC is absolutely making this deal so, so, not just palatable, but really just everybody is eager to make sure that they can get in on this is the measurement component, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that we can wax poetic as much as we want about the philosophies that we all have within our respective organizations and as individuals of giving back to communities, 
which is very important. But I think that it's we have to be very mindful of the reality that clients are looking for business results, and this is something that helps deliver on that. So again, I think that for us at Zenith as an agency, this is something where it sophisticates the black owned eco space more, drives that equity, and really just hones in on the consumer needs. So I'm excited about this partnership on my end. Right, and you gotta understand, because you brought up something, which is, this is the conversation we've always had. So look, I spent most of my time in general market and the only, oppor only goal, uh, I say some people care about this, but everybody cares about this. Like we're all in business <laughs> basically, mm -hmm. you know, not basically, to grow our businesses point right. blank. Yeah. Now the interesting thing about that is the only place you source growth is from underinvested in opportunities and communities. Mm -hmm. So I don't care what color, what creep, whatever, if there's an underinvested <laughs> in, where, so if I told you there was a consumer that had $1.7 trillion worth of spending, but yet most brands index 10 to 20% if they're lucky, you go, where is this mythical consumer? Right. Well, guess what? <laughs> this mythical consumer is right here. Yeah. Now the challenge is, is we don't have the infrastructure to unlock that consumer at scale. Right. And this partnership is the beginning of unlocking that consumer at scale, but there's another piece of it. So first of all, what you also said was, you know, through this partnership is really a reinvestment in the ecosystem. So it allows us to continue to grow the black owned media ecosystem, which was our singular goal from the very beginning. And this allows us to do that at scale. So not just our collective members, but the entire ecosystem, everything down from production partners, yada, yada, grow. The other side of the coin is it allows us to help NBC by us bringing more content to the forefront that has representation. And I know representation is a strange thing to talk about, but it's not really just about representation, it's about resonance. Yes. So P&G understood one thing. In the 1950s, NBC could reach every single female who watched television, there was no question, but they couldn't resonate with them. So they literally created soap operas, a genre that was specific for this group uh, you know, for this demographic that connected with them. And if you don't believe me that this is what we're doing, look at Black Panther. All of a sudden, we were creating Marvel movies forever. Mm -hmm. The moment you put a black cast in that, Amazing. it explodes. And that's the opportunity that sits in front of us. And to your point, to continue to build sophisticated scale solutions alongside a partner like this that also drives the mission of, and not even the mission of just reinvesting in the community, but creating more value opportunity, Absolutely. you know, to unlock that consumer uh, and, and, but do it in a, in, a, in a responsible way that's investing in the community versus just taking away from the community. So, and these guys have made that possible on every single level and I applaud them. And to be at their scale, I was in the rooms with them on a different side of the ballgame. It's very rare. It's yeah. very rare. So, I don't know, I didn't mean to wax well. No, no, you're, I, I love it. <laughs> Keep going. But I, I want you to go along the lines of, you talked about resonance, you talked about scale. What have been some of the early successes from this partnership? You've been here for four months um, since you announced. What have you seen as some of the successes that maybe the agency uh, is, are leading into or that you guys have seen? I'll just say, I don't think you would be on this stage if we weren't being successful. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Four I will. months later, I don't think <laughs> you'd be talking to but, <laughs> sorry. I can tell you a little bit from our side is you know the response that we've seen in the marketplace, I mm -hmm. think is requisite with the quality of the products that we've brought. And that is not just the response that we've seen for this year, but that's the response for the rush to be a part of it next year. And I think you know, Peter can talk about the interesting moment at which this partnership came out. And anyway, sorry. No, no, it's just, it, it, but, but I, I I'll just jump on that, say the, the way, and, you know, timing's everything. We had the privilege of announcing this um, in Cannes. Mm -hmm. We were in the thick of upfront negotiations we specifically wanted to make sure that it was understood that we were not selling these products. Group Black is and was at the time, um, and will be continuing know, whoa, to sell whoa, them. Whoa, whoa, whoa! No, I, I, mean, like, <laughs> I was like, "What happened?" I mean, I mean, at, the, at, the, at the moment, they were There's selling a it. Deal in the they were doing it today. <laughs> they were doing it tomorrow. Um, but that, 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 that it was something that was seen a, a set and apart from what we, the regular business we were transacting. Mm -hmm. We were specifically, basically, at its, at its most basic level, saying if we're able to work with brands during one month of the year, which ironically is the shortest month of the mm -hmm. year, um, <laughs> during Black Heritage Month, Black History Month, whatever you want to call it, why can't we elevate that and celebrate it all year long? Yeah. And we just did not have the experience or the focus to be able to pull that off. Mm -hmm. Group Black does, and so it's been exciting to seeing every major category come forward of, 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 of our cadre of marketing partners and say, yes, I love that vision, yes, I want to be part of it, and transacting through Group Black, which is exactly how we designed it. It's rare that things actually come forward the way you yeah. designed it. Uh, so we got to like whatever there's wood, but, but no, <laughs> but it's, it's, just, it's just been really exciting to see that support because then 
you know, success is a powerful drug. Right. Once other folks get into it and they see it, then there's this FOMO, like, oh my God. And they're like, I gotta get it too. So we know, to your point, uh, the scale is there, the measurement's there. Now we have clients there. So now it's like, okay, that we're off to the races. So you're basically just talking about cultural perspective and sort of everyone becoming aware <laughs> of this culture and perspective. Um, Emerson, for you, um, why do you think sort of this awareness of cultural perspective um, has become so critical, especially as we think about the success of this partnership and the early success of this partnership and where it's evolving to? Why has that become so critical for agencies? Sure. So, you know, and my title at Zenith is cultural convergence. And I think <laughs> a lot of people are kind of like, what does that mean? <laughs> and it's, it, basically, I lead multicultural and DEI marketing, but I think at the core of it is really the notion that culture is something that l drives us all, that leads us all, and that when we think of our end-to-end -end process from our audience insights and research to our you know, due diligence of understanding what media channels and partners are going to reach them, to the way in which we set up our analytics partnerships and, and measurement frameworks, learning agendas, and then iterate upon those learnings, all of that needs to have a cultural lens upon it, right? And that means that we're infusing intersectional identities and insights into that entire process so that we're understanding, to your point earlier, Bonin, right, about their, what's that resonance, really? And I think that it's very easy at the agency side to, for a long time, and I'd say that even still there are instances of this, right, where there's your general market media plan, mm -hmm. and then there's your black, Hispanic, Asian, LGBT, <laughs> yes. so on and so forth media plan. And I think that now as we look at the media ecosystem and the changing dynamic of demographics, you know, when you look at purely based on census data, population growth has been and will continue to be fueled by minorities, by mm -hmm. diverse populations. So when it comes to that growth in and of itself, there's a cultural impact that is made that we cannot take our eye off of. So I think that when we talk about, does it reach black people? Sure. Does it resonate with them? I don't know about that, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that we need to start taking that into account. And this partnership helps leverage the inventory from NBC, right? That is so culturally relevant, but perhaps in a different manner of being sold in the marketplace was not being factored into the way that we need to more authentically reach our consumer. Now, through Group Black, we can do two things. We can both deliver on our you know, uh, uh, supplier diversity needs for our clients and as an agency, and really lean into that content that is premium, culturally relevant, and at the end of the day drives performance. Because to your point, we think with this. Yeah. And I think that that's something hugely important to keep in mind. So for me, culture is just something that, you know, I, I, as demographics, as culture evolves, I think that there will be endless amount of content out there, but one thing that I have to constantly kind of remind myself of and my teams are, if content is king, culture still reigns supreme. And I think that mm -hmm. we need to be very mindful of what that culture is that is being reflected within certain spaces and places and who it's being directed to. Right. And I think you brought up a point which is also, this is a game of premium. Like mm -hmm. We forget that the things that well, first, the things that we talk about that we see in, in this medium are the things that are of usually, there are some other things we talk about, but usually tends to be the highest quality creative programming that it captures. And by the way, when it gets to that quality, it actually doesn't matter. It, 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 it caps, you know, I, I guess what I want to say is that a black cast, just like in Black Panther, captures, you know, broad, broad market as well. So that's the beautiful thing about this. But I think that that is the piece where how do we make sure it's premium and how do we make sure that it is culturally authentic? And I even just look, you know, even in the Hispanic community, there's still a, a, a gap of that. And I look at whatever the show is, it's called a Not Your Fool. I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> It, 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 but you know what I thought was really, for those who haven't seen it, well, I can't explain it. But anyway, here's the thing. <laughs> it's too intricate to explain. If you haven't seen it. But it might not be one of your shows, so I apologize. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to pause it. But what I thought was interesting is that when, when it shows the family dynamic, it shows the dynamic of moving from English to Spanish in a fluid way yes. in one place. And, you know, the funny thing, I think we've all been trained to read subtitles, so the subtitles even work in English. And I just thought... To me, it just presented a whole, I've never seen that 
you know, represented in mm -hmm. move, mm -hmm. in th whatever, TV shows, but I've seen it, you know, I know that that's the real life. Right. And so I guess my point is it's those kind of cultural nuances that are missing in the content that make you say, yes, this is for me and that connects yeah. you. And so that resonance is the piece that is transformational. Agreed. So I, I Sorry. absolutely, no. No, it's great. I'll choose another one next time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I absolutely love that. Um, and talking about sort of that evolution, sort of that example with the TV show, uh, would you call it Fool? What was the show? We can't. We can't keep, keep mentioning? Okay. Um, but anyway, but sure who as, as we're to. talking about sort of the evolution <laughs> and sort of that being the right direction, where do you see the evolution, evolution of this partnership going? Like, where are we in five years? We see the beginning. We're very excited. But in five years, where are we? What are we doing? What are we watching? Um, well, I, I would start off by saying, um, and I, I love where this conversation was going, this intersectionality. Mm -hmm. I think that there's so much opportunity still to grow. Um, as Emerson highlighted, you know, we've had a rich history inside NBC Universal with the Hispanic marketplace because of Telemundo. We just um, this week ended Hispanic Heritage Month. Mm -hmm. You know, this celebration this year was particularly uh, special to me because of the spectrum mm -hmm. of Hispanic identities that we celebrated. Um, Afro-Latinoism, uh, Asian Latinoism, every other mixture and intersectionality you could imagine, really at the forefront, not like as an add-on. And I'd love to see us continue to service those communities um, in, in innovative ways that the group Black Team um, understands and, and can lean into. Uh, we've, you know, it's interesting. Those of us that worked in multicultural marketing for a while. Um, we, you know, it used to be a very lonely room. Right. I see this room is actually really quite crowded. So <laughs> people finally are realizing, to Bonin's point, is that the growth engine of America mm -hmm. is yeah. multicultural, yeah. full and stop. So finding ways we can work with Group Black to continue to uh, service both the audience and the great content they're developing, as well as the uh, marketing opportunities would be something we would really love to lean into. And, and Matt, just to add on to that, right, in terms of full stop, when it comes to economic buying power and growth, consider that non-Hispanic white buying power is projected from 21 to 26 to grow 21%. For black, Hispanic, and Asian audiences, consumers, it's projected to grow 36%. And I think that that's something alone that we as marketers, as business professionals, cannot lose sight of, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, I'll go back to it. We, we, this is what really guides us here. Our heart, our minds, our hearts and our souls, but this is what really maintains our livelihood and our ability to keep going and uplifts those communities. So I think that it's, there's, there's both a purpose and an actual, you know, I think just practicality, I'd say, mm -hmm. that we need to be very mindful of in terms of, that's just 2026. Mm -hmm. Never mind the fact that by 2030, there's projections by the US Census, which mind you, this once upon a time ago, this figure was, it was supposed to be 2060 that the minority was going to become the majority. Now it's 2030. We, that, that's so, it's right there. Right. It's right there. <laughs> yeah. So I think that if we as marketers are not making this an inherent part of how we work and considering these type of partnerships within our broad strategies, that's on us and we miss the mark, frankly. And, and I think sometimes we forget that, you know, the, the, those that lean in build competitive advantage that lasts, you know, because right now what's happening is you got a market that's underinvested in. So the moment you, it, so it means it's a very, le it's a less crowded market than anything else you can invest in. So right now you're investing in a saturated audience that you already have high penetration, high reach on, and you're competing in a field of, you know, everybody else. Here you've got low penetration, low reach, and very few players. And if you look, again, not to use the analogy of P&G, but they invested in television when everybody was in radio. Mm -hmm. And they built competitive advantage that lasts them for the next 60 years. Mm -hmm. You build your brand now with this audience in an authentic, resonant way, this will carry you way past 2026 and put you on a growth curve that your competitors are going to not even have, you know, right. will not even be looking at. So, so uh, Emerson, so I want to continue on that line no, of thinking, is that what you are saying to your clients to get them to say yes to this partnership? Like, think ahead past 2026, how are you getting them to say yes? So to our clients, whenever we really are bringing forward not only this partnership, but I'd say a general approach to multicultural, to DEI, we have an ideology to really step back, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think that we have a tendency to get so inundated and stuck in the brief 
in that immediate, like we're building this media plan and this is what we're doing and that partner. <laughs> but I think that as consultants, what we're really trying to do is, and I, and I use that word intentionally, consultants, is that we're trying to then really take a look at our clients' business holistically, understand what is the diverse consumer experience when it comes to product, when it comes to customer service, when it comes to you know just the media choices that we make and are we reaching them and again resonating with them so for for us it's really about stepping back and saying how are we going to be connecting your dei strategies to your media strategy to your marketing strategy and then let's talk about the right partnerships because i'll be, I'll be quite honest there's 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 always going to be certain clients you know and certain organizations that at, at some point you just it, it becomes a little bit exhausting. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, you, you small steps are needed, but I think that when you ta approach it from a more holistic, consultative standpoint, clients are more receptive because they recognize that you understand their business, their products, right? Just let's, let's in an example, if from a financial category, you recognize the fact that, you know, a black and Hispanic consumers are at a disadvantage, or from a CPG standpoint that their products simply aren't meant for their type of hair or skin. Those are things that we try to address. And then within media marketing and these type of partnerships, bring to the table to say, listen, we, again, we're reaching you, resonating with you with the stories that are familiar, but now let's talk about the things that we as a brand need to grow in and how we're gonna commit to you. So I think that partnerships like this NBC and Group Black relationship are something that fit into a broader ecosystem and framework mm -hmm. that we this fits in so easily into again because it does that job of reaching uh, at scale right mm -hmm. resonating providing measurement and really giving that content that is so pulling at the heartstrings so for me it's 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 much less about saying why you need to buy this partnership and this inventory it's about the same mentality that i think that group black and both nbc bring to the table is Let's take a step back and look at your business holistically. And Peter, would you say, um, could you go into a little sort of depth on what you'd like to see from other partners now that you have sort of the group black partnership like in your head? What would you like to see for other partners? Well, I think um, there are no other partners. <laughs> there are no other partners. <laughs> There's no yeah. other shows except for our shows. No other shows. You got me. Let me, let, let me if I may, I'll, let me, let me flip your question around. I think, I think what I'd like to see from the industry mm -hmm. Is um, is people doing less of this mm -hmm. and doing more action because we've now made it so easy. And again, for those of us that have been working in the multicultural, diverse space for a while, the biggest problem was where do I begin? Where right, I was here, oh, I don't want to insult my consumer. What if I say something in Spanish or English? What if I do something that is the wrong face on an ad? Will it offend somebody? And then the biggest one, measurement, and then mm -hmm. scale. Well, we've got all of it. Like we've got mm -hmm. programs that are premium. You've got a very easy on and off ramp to be able to do it. It's fully measurable. It's a platform on streaming, which is incredibly measurable in terms of return on ad spend. It can be completely performance based. And it's, it's something where it's like enough of this mm -hmm. and just like show up, which luckily a lot of our clients are stepping up. But I would say for those of you that are not, it's like, how can you go back to your board of directors and tell them that you couldn't spend the money that you promised you were going to? Like, that's ridiculous. Right, right. And even more to that, how can you go back to your board of directors and say, I didn't unlock the audience capability and possibility that I could have, mm. and I'm not actually building an opportunity for advantage in the marketplace with a consumer that I still am under index with? Right. So, Bonin, I mean, I, I think that's an excellent point, um, and I love that. Where do you see sort of Group Black growing um, over not only the next five years, but just like with this partnership specifically with NBC? Look, I think that um, we're going to continue to evolve the product. I'm very excited about programming and the ability to partner on, 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 on programming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that programming, I believe, you know, has the potential to continue to help NBC grow that audience. Um, so that to me is exciting, but I, I think the most exciting thing is the intersectionality and now that we've proven ourselves our ability to sit down at the table in a continuously collaborative way with both NBC with our client and our agency partners and create the type of platforms and opportunity that doesn't exist from a true infrastructure perspective to unlock this consumer growth today and to me at the end of the day that's what really matters is 
and doing it in a way that's really investing back in the community, which is our mission. So if we can accomplish that, the, in, the community grows, the audience grows, the community grows, the audience grows, the opportunity grows, that's what's gonna create this flywheel. Because look, had we invested in black owned businesses at the same rate we do other businesses over the last 20 years, that $1.7 trillion worth of spending power would have been $17 trillion. Mm -hmm. So we're fooling ourselves by not thinking that we're all leaving money on the table, <laughs> by not making sure that we're not just growing the audience, but investing in the community to then grow the audience, to grow the opportunity. And to me, that's the economic flywheel that we have the opportunity to all participate in. Yeah. Love it. All right, let's pause there. We're gonna take some questions for the audience. I believe they're mic runners. Somewhere? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I can't see you. Okay. <laughs> so if you have any questions, <laughs> raise your hand. One of the mic runners will pick you because I can't see a thing. It's so light, it's like incredibly <laughs> strong. I see someone in the back. I do see someone in the back. I know, this is a thick audience. I don't know how you're going to mic run. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like crowd surf, man. Hey, how you doing? I'm just curious, what are the actual like mechanics of the deal? Like Group Black's creating the content, Peacock is streaming it, like how are viewers finding it? Like you have to get into the Peacock app. Yeah, and then so is it housed in its own? Happy yeah. to, happy to uh, give a very quick 101. So essentially um, in February, we've historically, in our big three years of Peacock's existence, so it's been a lifetime, uh, we've been uh, in February celebrating Black Heritage, Black History Month with uh, specific rails of content. They're either black-led comedy, black-led drama, um, different shows that literally in the title say that. And those channels were always present all year long, but they were sort of deprecated as other months came along and other things happened. And so what we've done is we've actually elevated those rails of content, elevated um, these shows, um, and made them available all year long and given the rights to sell the advertising specifically to those shows to Group Black. So in a sense, they have a piece of real estate inside the premium service that is Peacock that Group Black, Group Black represents. You can find that content either by going into the app. We also are just now launching a very aggressive advertising campaign using our own um, NBC Universal ad space to tell people, hey, have you seen this? Check it out. There's videos, there's also social media marketing we're doing and a bunch of things to keep driving up awareness. And because um, the advertising is supporting it, we're then able to keep growing it and growing it and growing it. That's awesome. One year in streaming is like three years, seven years in running. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we feel it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a unique contextual collection where you know that you're getting an audience in a resonant space. So. Yeah, love that. Congratulations. Thank you. One over there. It's a lot of people with no questions. That's right. <laughs> we answered it all, people. We're good. <laughs> I'm, in the, I'm in the cut. I don't even think y'all can see me. Right. Yeah, uh, I can, see you. But you can hear me, hopefully. We yeah. can see you. Uh, Bonin, I've listened to you speak two different times today, and you, <laughs> um, you mentioned the, the $1.7 trillion data point about uh, what is available in the pursuit of these kinds of partnerships and what it means to actually invest in the black dollar. Uh, I'm, I'm eager to know what other data points do you have? I work in technology, I'm thinking about, are there trends in, in where there are black folks showing up online? Are there trends in the kinds of technology that black folks are engaging with more that help to build the case for building and investing in these kinds of partnerships and elevating these, these populations in the work that's happening in media and, and beyond? That's a good question. I think what we're seeing is, you know, the growth in a lot of channels. So we're seeing everything from creators. So, you know, the creator study that we did with Nielsen. I'm trying to look for you, but I might as well stop because I, I, can't, I just can't. On this side. It's, just, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. There you go. Okay, there you go. Okay. Just not going to. Okay. Um, you know, so I think that, you know, we're seeing a huge trend on, on the creator front. And again, you know, I don't know which panel you were in. Um, I'm trying to think which one I said that. Yeah, the Amazon one. So, I, and you know, I brought it up. And what I didn't talk about is that, you know, for me, the trend is as they continue to grow in their ability to impact audiences, and their audiences continue to grow. So, you know, they have 10x impact uh, on you know certain certain categories. But the even bigger opportunity is the arbitrage, right? So they make 35% less 
than you know, the counterpart creators, so black creators versus non-black creators. And so that investment, again, I see deltas, right? So when, you know, when consumer consumption was going like this for TV, investment was still flat because they were in radio, and those that invested when that delta shifts are those that win. And so I think that that's a, um, you know, a huge delta. I think another piece that I think we're seeing is we're seeing the gravitation, we talked about it on Monday morning, of the athlete becoming the creator. And I think NIL has started that shift, but I think you're seeing much more seasoned athletes doing that. And what they're doing is they're not talking about, because there's such a gap between sports and what the athlete actually does in and off the field. And I think we're beginning to see a lot more of, uh, of that and of the consumers gravitating uh, towards that component. Uh, and then I think when you look specifically at the growth of the black YouTube space, it, it, it's huge and growing right now. We have a huge footprint to be able to reach there. Uh, um, and then again, I, I think I, I said this uh, to you before, and in terms of where else we're seeing um, resonance is I think people are beginning to gravitate. So I would say, like, I can't mention the sales. I, I can't really go into this specifically, maybe in person, but the HBCU community continues to grow larger and larger and larger. TSU just got a $2 billion investment grant. That's gonna transform their endowment. Um, and so I think there's a lot of room. You look, look at what Dion did. You know, I think there's a lot of room in that space where consumers are now gravitating to see athletes that go to places that look like them, that kind of space. I think black gaming too is pretty big. I would add in there also just uh, two, no, it's like two things that we at NBC Universal were involved in. More recently, um, was uh, was involved with Black Tech Week, uh, which right. was which was a really cool event yeah. and something that that we at, within NBC Universal, like from a news perspective, really sh decided to shine a light on this mm -hmm. year. And I think it was fantastic. I, I learned a ton, as well as the American Black Film Festival, which is a few months before right. that, and obviously making a few movies inside our family. Um, it's always good to c keep an eye on what uh, who are some of the up and coming. Um, Film makers in that space, so there's there's a lot of growth, yeah. and it's mm -hmm. been there. The thing is now it's shining a light on it and, yeah. and helping other folks know about it. Yeah. All right. Well, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Last, go ahead, go ahead, really go, last point. I think you know <laughs> even from a fintech standpoint, right? When you think right, about the mm -hmm. banks that are being created by black consumers for black consumers, because they want that those that those dollars to go back into their communities to see it benefit how, where their children grow up. So there's a lot of things, and that's just not within the black community, that's also, there are Hispanic uh, banks that are yep. Spanish language, that are Asian American ones that are specific to their communities. There's LGBT banks, you know, I think that that's another space where people are trying to reclaim wealth and opportunity and have it be more beneficial for their own time. And I think that that's something that cannot lose sight of as well. Uh, that's a perfect place for us to end. We do have to. <laughs> in the panel. Um, but gentlemen, thank you so much thank for you. sharing thank all those insights. This has been wonderful. Uh, I am looking really forward to hearing how the program evolves, how the partnership evolves, and hope that you see, be back here next year and hear more Thanks about so it. Much. Beautiful. Thank <laughs> Thanks. you. A, a, round, a big round of applause for our moderator. Absolutely. Yeah. All the love to show out. Thank you. Oh, don't get up. Don't get up. <laughs>